Welcome back to Walden's World. And this is Charles' other scooter. He said that the motor runs fine. It's just sounding okay. But he's got a problem with his transmission. So he said, uh, fuel and Rechner cutting off. Kicking back on. So the fuel and Rechner is working. But he says apparently he has a little issue with the transmission. Let's see if we can see anything when we hit the gas. First off, I don't even think there's a belt in there because the tire didn't move. Um, but he said when there was a belt in there, it was having a little bit of issues. So we went ahead and ordered from GY6 Racing Incorporated. We got a new belt for a short case. Hopefully it's a short case. Now that I look at it, I might got the wrong belt. Um, and we got a variator and a clutch. So uh, I think that's actually the wrong case. We're about to find out. But anyway, we're going to take this off. We'll go through a few things about what's going on with these transmissions and I'll show you here in a second. Let me pull this side cover off. So on these side covers, um, on the 50s, I believe the kickstart is attached to this side, so you don't have to pull it off. On the 150s, I believe you actually have to pull the kickstart off because it is attached on the inside. A um, bunch of eight millimeters. So we'll just pull these apart and uh, they're all throughout the bike here. That's not an eight millimeter socket, is it? looks like a nine or a ten all right pretty much all these bolts i believe are the same length um normally sometimes you've got some kind of a cable carrier there and then on the bottom here which you can't see if my light sucks there is a drain for your carburetor on that hook I like that black mama stuff. Found the belt. So we should be able to glue this thing back together with a little bit of super glue or some Gorilla Glue and it'll be fine. No problem. Okay, so normally when your belt broke, a lot of times your rollers behind there will uh, get a little upset with you and pop on out as your variator expanded all the way. So let's pull it apart and we'll pull our clutch apart too. And we'll do a little explanation on them. Holy crap, that is a no-no. Yeah, I don't know about this. takes off lug nuts off of cars so this is retarded I can see that all the stuff stripped on this too that came off as it should I'm not gonna grab a hold of that that's nuts what in the heck are these people doing? This is why I don't like working on a lot of these scooters because usually it's somebody on drugs that just went in front of you by obviously looking at the threads. That charges my battery. See if I can get a better charge battery. Okay, so I ended up going with an American socket to limit. So each time you have a pivot point, you're gonna lose uh, torque. So uh, I ended up using 11 sixteenths and got it off. Obviously not gonna put it back on that way. Freaking idiots. You can see the deal is, they, they tore it up a little bit on the way in. Threads look good. 
And as we suspected, when this belt shatters, a lot of times the rollers end up looking like a mess. So, none of this matters. I want to show you a little something about these rollers. As they begin to wear out, a couple of things happen. You'll get flat spots on them. So you can see here, if you can. They'll get a flat spot on them and they'll actually stick when they're going in and out. You'll have problems with that. That's one issue. Uh, the flatter they get, the worse they get. And some of them are really flat. Number two, there is a brass bushing inside of here. So this thing pivots on it. And as it gets wore out, you start getting slop in there. When you get slop in there, this reduces your drive and it actually, you can't really tell, but it caused the binding and you lose your power on that. So that's another issue. Number three, on these clutches, if you were actually to disassemble them, the, each one of these shoes have a spring in them. So these springs are uh, come out as well as it has a pressure spring inside of here. And if you notice, I can pull that down and it comes down. Now, sometimes as these start getting more, I've seen them where they'll get caught right here. Well, if they get caught and they don't want to pop back down, what that has done is that's left your gear, your scooter, in uh, say you had five gears, you'd be in fourth or fifth gear. So if you're at a stop sign and you try to start your scooter off in fifth gear, like if you were tried your motorcycle in fifth gear, what happens? You hear the motor bog down and it shuts off. You killed it. Same situation with this. So if your motor runs decent and you have a problem with it taking off at a stop sign, and a lot of times this will happen after you've left home, everything started running again, and then it does it at a stop sign, a stoplight, or when you go to slow down. Because you've let off the gas, the motor has quit running, but that does not mean the position of your belt has changed. All that means is your RPM slowed down. Once your RPM slow down so much, just like your motor, your, your stuff disengages and you're not moving anymore. And that's because of the, the uh, clutch springs themselves. You can change the springs out inside of here. I believe some of them come on at 1500 RPMs, um, 2000 RPMs, 2500 RPMs. So if you were to change the springs out with a stiffer one at 2500 RPMs and it finally engages, <coughs> That's when you start popping wheelies and stuff. Um, and you have a lot more torque with a higher RPM. There's a lot less bog. So there's many things you can do. You can change your roller weights. You make them heavier, that pushes quicker. Um, it's gonna cause a lot more torque at a lower end. But if you were to do that, as well as change your springs, there's a lot of things you can do to your transmission. But anyway, so if you have problems with it stopping at a stop sign, obviously if it ain't moving at all, um, you know you have an issue. Uh, so you, you can check these things. The number one mo thing I've seen is just push this in. Does that move? Now, some of y'all are probably weak and play video games all the time. You may not be able to do that. Grandpa's got some crazy muscles. Um, but check that out. No big deal. You can change your belt that way too. You can actually pull that off, push the belt and, and take some of these you can get off without doing any of that. We're going to put a new transmission on here and, uh, looks like I did get the right belt. I don't know why I second guess myself, but so we'll put a new one in and I'll compare the stuff and kind of show you what's going on. We'll uh, wiggle this one compared to the new one. Um, this don't feel real, real bad, but Charles wanted a new transmission. Obviously the belt was broke, so that's what we're doing for him. All right guys, so on these uh, rollers, these were the originals and if you've got a Speed scale, which I use this for pistons and all kinds of stuff, not to be confused with weed scale. You'll notice that we've got 5.1 grams on the original rollers. These are the ones that came with the kit. So these are 6.5 grams. And then I actually had an extra set here. And we'll see what those are. And those are 8.8 .8 grams. 
So we're actually gonna run the ones with the kit, but let's think about this for a second. What would happen if we put these different ones in? These are obviously not pushing out as hard on the variator. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna kind of stay in the lower gear and it'll take a lot longer to get up to top speed. Um, this would be good uh, for more kind of bottom end torque. Um, once you get up into the heavier ones, it's gonna wanna push that belt out really fast, fast as it can. And uh, you do have more bottom end torque on this, but, and you'll have, or excuse me, you're not gonna have as much, yeah, I'm getting mixed up. Anyway, you'll get more top speed out of this. It probably won't take off and uh, hill climb quite as well. Um, these are gonna be better, lighter rollers gonna be better for hill climbing. Um, heavier roller is going to be better for top speed and things of that nature. So if you get too light though, uh, don't want to press all the way out and you won't get the amount of speed that you would out of it. And then once you go into switching the springs, like I said earlier, um, all kinds of amazing things happen. And uh, you've seen the video of my son's uh, Honda. It, uh, so we, we put in uh, heavier springs in it so that it didn't come on until later on. That's why that thing is doing wheels. <laughs> All right, guys, so on the uh, variator guide pins, we got 47.4. This is the old one, and this brand new one that came in with the kit is 46.5. Um, I'm actually gonna use the old one. It looks really good. And the reason is, is because when I tested them, this one seems to have a lot less play uh, than this one. So this one's got a lot of play in it. And I think it's actually going to cause me resistance. Um, this one has plenty to work. Uh, there won't be any problems there whatsoever. So it's nice and smooth. And I think we're gonna get better torque out of it. So we're going with that one. Okay, so we fixed his kick start. He actually had this back behind. There's a weld on there that keeps it from going back. So it was jam stuck. Um, we got it working now. We'll blow that all out before we put it back in. And uh, so I've got the rear clutch on and half of the variator. I just uh, simply squeeze those springs in and push the belt in is what I do. We'll go ahead and put this plate on and we'll see what happens. All right, so let's see if she'll start up now. On these scooters, they've got a uh, fuel pump on the carburetor. Hit your throttle three times, I always tell people. Let's see if the back wheel will go for a little dance for it. Don't hold the back brake and hit the gas. That didn't work at all. Hey, y'all like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, if you got any information that'll help me, that'd be great. If I got any information that'll help you, well, holler at me. We're out of here.